So, Seth, man, you just came back from this crazy trip to Australia, dream mm-hmm. photography trip, dude. How was that? Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, I mean, we went out to the, the outback, and we were looking around, seeing all kinds of dingoes. Wait. I gotta go, dude! How are you feeling this morning? I'm tired. <laughs> I've been waiting on this day for like a year. So. Let's make it happen. Let's, uh, let's go to the hill country. After touching down in Texas and with an early morning wake up call, Derek and I hit the road heading west towards the Hunt Fish Podcast Summit to get after some Rio Grande turkey and record some shows with some awesome friends. So, Derek here pulled over. I had to go take a shit, and the button on my pants popped off. I had to buy a sewing kit at the gas station at Bucky's. At Bucky's. But it was a good endeavor because, uh, Bucky's is pretty sweet. We're headed down to, where the hell are we going? Uh, Junction, <laughs> Texas. To kill stuff. Double draw range. Damn millennials on their cell phones. Before we make it to Junction though, we make a quick pit stop at Derek's hunting lease to see if we can stir up any turkey, to check out the lay of the land, and to pick up some last minute gear needed for the hunt. If you've never experienced a Texas hunting camp before, it's a unique experience among unique experiences. With a diverse collection of butchering implements, a hodgepodge of cooking, camping, and hunting tools, cattle roaming in every which direction, and a plethora of semi-wild ranch animals, it's something you should check out firsthand if you ever get the opportunity. Never having experienced the Texas Hill Country before, this is a great first way to get my feet wet with what to expect in the upcoming days. This landscape is so foreign to me with wide open expanses, cedar trees, the iconic skulls of cattle and cactus everywhere, heavily in contrast to the hardwood forests I'm so familiar with in the Midwest. Derek throws on his camo, loads up his gun, and we take a brief walk out into the open West Texas hills and see if we can call anything in. And in my vocabulary, hunting and patience go hand in hand. As anyone who's hunted before knows, and as we state many times on this trip, it's called hunting, not killing. Of 
with no luck, we pack up and hit the road again to continue on our journey to the Double Draw Ranch in Junction, Texas. As they say, it's better to have tried and failed than to never have tried at all. We're almost there. All right, what um, I think I'm at about 15, 16 hours of travel. Yeah. And uh, we finally made it. <laughs> Double Draw Ranch. We're about to go meet the rest of the uh, hunting. Yeah, about half the crew's here already. They beat us here. So. Yeah, and you live not that far, so <laughs> we're making bad time. <laughs> we're here. I'm excited. Derek, you excited? I'm super excited. I'm ready to go get in the woods. Let's do this. And record some shows. Yeah, I'm ready so. to hunt. As we finally make our way down the long winding road to the Double Draw Ranch, we pull up to the lodge where we dump our gear, unload the truck, catch up with old friends, take in the scenery, pack up our backpacks and guns, and head out to the blind where Derek and I are joined by Todd Craighead, host of Outdoor Oklahoma, to begin the real hunt for the elusive Rio Grande Turkey. morning takeoff. First morning. Round two. That's right. <laughs> We're in the same place from last night, so. Morning starts off slow as I'm barely awake after two days of intensive travel halfway across the U.S., but as the sun starts to rise and the animals start to come to life, I'm amazed at all the foreign sights and sounds that I'm experiencing. But the main reason we all came here is to hunt turkey, and as anyone who's hunted turkey before knows, they're elusive, and today is no exception. With inclement weather on the horizon, our luck doesn't seem to be getting any better. Thanks, you just scared away my turkey. <laughs> just kidding. They haven't moved all freaking day. They've been in right there, yeah, right there. Probably with hens. Yeah, they, I heard one, did y'all gobble? Uh, and I heard one sound like he was like right there. It sounded like he was right on the other side of his brush pile and then he just stopped. There was like three or four birds over here working, a couple down there, a couple closer. And y'all probably couldn't hear him, but behind us, where it just drops it. off, there was five or six just going on. That's why I kept calling so much. I may go behind us and drop down on this side. Yeah. So, but let's go eat first, and then let's get some podcast done. Okay. You got any words of wisdom, Todd? <laughs> I would recommend in the future that we be where the turkeys are. <laughs> and that's come, you know, after decades of, you know, experience and wisdom and woodsmanship that it really helps if you're aware of the turkeys are. Just, I like that. I like that knowledge. You know, I had a Jake walk in and I could have shot him. He was right in front of me, maybe 20 yards. But his beard was so small it just tufted up one feather. <laughs> I texted him it was like 20 minutes later for me see it I think. But uh he come out and he was looking and then he just walked back off. So, yeah, they were all over back down in there. I don't know if you could hear them. There was five or six toms well, not working. Not me, because I'm deaf. But <laughs> I heard you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no luck this morning, but 
We're gonna go do some podcasting and we're gonna come back out and do her all over again. some podcasts and to eat a hearty Texas breakfast, we head back out to the blind to commence the waiting game that is turkey hunting. I don't think I got enough water bottles. I have to pee in about six minutes. Uh, yeah, it's been my story of my life so far. for Rio Grande Turkey. I'm up here with Todd. And uh, we had a lot of calls this morning, but right now it is here in hell and it's really getting hot. So we're hoping to call something in. Now we have an incentive because the winner, the first person to get a turkey wins this badass call that Derek has. So we're out for blood, I'll tell you what. Every man for his own. <laughs> Every man for his own. He's gonna shoot me. Leave me for dead so that call can happen. <laughs> As the day progresses and the heat and wind crank up, Todd and I discuss a new plan of action as we have not seen a single bird all day up to this point. And we feel that sitting and waiting for them to come to us may not be the best option if we want to be successful on this hunt. All right, so we haven't had much luck sitting here. It's really windy and we haven't heard anything. So we're gonna take our chances and head over to that tree. Waiting at our next spot for a while and still no action, Todd and I decide to push further into the hills to see if we can stir something up. We just heard one pretty close, we're onto something. Shit. So Todd just blew a crow call and we're gonna head down to this flat area down here. Because he doesn't sound like he's very close. Try and get closer. Try and get a visual. As the day starts to wind down, Todd and I decide to split up to potentially increase our chances of success. Todd heads back up to an area he liked from earlier, and I stay put on the top of the hill where we heard the last call, sitting and waiting as patiently as I can. Eight hours already today. 
the walk of shame back to the original spot we started. That was intense. There was turkeys going everywhere. But uh, yeah, that was a long day. And luckily, we get to do it all over again tomorrow. And I just realized right now that I forgot my headlamp. So I better move my ass pretty damn quick to get back. <laughs> but luckily this is all wide open, so it won't be that bad. Man, I am ready for some food and some beer and to go to sleep. I just got here, oh. and I was I was kind of in the middle of the crown of that of that hill there because I wanted to be able to hear both sides and hear mm -hmm. when things went to roost. And sure enough, one some went to roost just to the west of or down the hill from that big brush pile you were talking about. And then now we're hearing one gobble right straight down the hill here. Let's, Pinpoint them exactly. They're coming. Oh, I don't have to call them. There he is. Yeah. It's just so pretty. Golly. And it's flat. It's not rocky. I guarantee that's where birds are going and where we could hear them yesterday afternoon hanging up out there. And then this morning, that one that just gobbled over there forever. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he was just in that on that flat strutting back and forth waiting for us the hens to come meet him. I'm, I'm okay with that strategy. I think that's... We haven't had anything that we... Well, that hen came into the feeder, but... That was it. I really think those are more likely spots for turkeys to end up, you know, mid-morning. Since you've been doing something, should you be cooking? It's cooking. It's cooking. <laughs> you just left us out I there to die. Hard work while you were out there sitting underneath the tree seat. <laughs> no, I was taking selfies, okay? <laughs> At the end of the first full day of hard hunting, we all came together for a good old fashioned Texas crawfish boil where we got to know each other a little better and let loose with some hot ass food, cold ass beer, and a heaping helping of a good time. Being that this was my first experience with crawfish, I was pleasantly surprised, but I had to take a few pointers from Derek on how to eat them properly. Okay. This is, it. This is a crawfish. Just take them, grab the tail, twist it, pop right off like that. I usually just take my thumb and kind of crack that first part. direction he's going in and cut him off and then try and draw him into me and so see how it goes
a tree, kind of like I am now. Pretty well hidden. And I called like a few times, didn't hear anything. Started moving. Then I came around a big brush pile. There was like five hens and a big tom. Probably 50 yards away. So I scooted in close to the brush pile. I was gonna try and set up and get a shot. Gone. Like ghosts, man. Holy shit. That's frustrating. That's the first uh, time I've seen at any reasonable distance since I've been here. So, I know they're here. They just don't want to get shot. <laughs> oh well, keep trying. Alright, well, I've been wandering around for about an hour. Calling, stopping, waiting. I haven't heard any. I gotta keep moving. All right, so we're sitting there recording podcasts, having a good time. We hear a gunshot. Everyone thinks, hey, someone finally got a turkey. Nope. Hayden Rowland shot a rattlesnake. And Mr. Gene Hennigan here cleaned it up nice and well for him, got it preserved, and he rolled it up in his carry on and flew back home. So that's a nice story about snakes for you. I think. The wind has died a little bit. Yeah. Everybody's gonna kill a turkey. yards of me two different times and I never saw it never I think it's just it was just on the next shelf below me okay um, but uh, I only hit the call once I tried to a different tactic and I was never gonna call tonight but then when he gobbled 50 yards from me, yeah couldn't help myself and next time he gobbled he sounded like he was a half mile south of me <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, I sat at that, this tree right here, for, for well, oh no, this tree behind the pile for a while, uh, and I heard him 
to the left down here. And then he went radio silent for 30 minutes. And then he ended up way over there, really loud. And I spun around and just sat on my knees and basically waited. And then So when you got the down there by me, you think that was a different I'm I'm guessing he just went like this. Oh, he just walked this this edge. But what are you gonna do? Don't hear any gunshots from anyone else either. So. <laughs> Not every hunt can be a success. We can sit around, speculate as to what went wrong, and weave our own tales of our adventure. But in the end, what really matters is that we all came together and bonded over arguably the most primal experience that any human can have. The Pursuit of the Wild. And there's a Port Arthur, which is 30 minutes south of me. One of the Port Arthur commissioners had his horse stabbed. Like one of the ones that apparently was stabbed, left in the creek pin outside of his. Now, it could be a message, or one of the Pearland horse, we know, we know, they said they only know the cause of death for sure on one because of the way the park came. But this one is was stabbed too. It could have been a message, or it could have been that maybe they, they were gonna do the meat harvesting or whatever. Drinking out of a big uh, pond or a big cooler, whatever that thing is, I don't know. Feeder oh. tank. There you go. Oh. That's awesome.